Next thing, let's come down here to the main tab. You can see under the main tab, we've got a couple options. One of them is where we can set our render camera. And a funny thing about it is that if you uh, do not have a camera one in your scene, this is the default. When you start rendering, it will actually create that camera for you. So for example, I'm just gonna zoom in on our camera right here and rename it something like camera two. Um, you can see right here the render, uh, th this, this uh, Redshift node is now dynamically linked to this. It knows that we changed that, which is really cool uh, thing about Houdini. It says, oh, um, I saw that the user had changed the name of this camera that is being linked to this parameter. So we're gonna um, update it here as well, um, which is really cool. For demonstration purposes, I'm gonna rename this back to camera one and show you what happens when I render now. So it's trying to render, but it doesn't see, it won't see that a camera one exists since one doesn't exist out here. So if I click render now, you'll see that it actually created that camera one for us. And that camera one has been created with default parameters. It's 16 by nine and it has been placed off in space somewhere like uh, in this default location up here. So it's just important to note that um, your, your camera your camera is going to be created by the Redshift ROP if it can't find a camera of this name in here when uh, we click the render, uh, the, when, we, when we initialize and start the IPR rendering. So I'm just gonna delete this extra cam one, rename this one back to cam one. And now if I click the render button, we should be good to go. As you can see, it's adjusted the aspect ratio and we're back in that portrait mode like we wanna be. Nice. So um, one of the things that we can also do is override the cam override the render resolution. Like if we wanted to do a half res render here, um, we could override that resolution here. Now the way that this works is the resolution of our render is being determined by the camera itself. So our camera, we set our resolution to 1920 by 2400. That is where Redshift is getting its resolution settings from. If we wanted to like manually override that, we could do that right here. I would just recommend um, if you're doing an override here to only um, do it proportional. So if you wanted to do a half res render, this would be a great way to do a half res render instead of having to type in and figure out what half of 1920 by 2400 is. Um, you could do that right here. Um, if you wanted to actually just do a user specified um, resolution, like say you wanted to do a 960 by 540, you could just um, type that in manually here. And then if you click render, it will change that aspect ratio, but it might just be a little unpredictable since what you have in your view won't really match up to what's here if you're changing your aspect ratio. However, doing something like half resolution, you will definitely get a proportionally sized um, you know, uh, output that just is lower res. So good, to, good thing to note that about the resolution overrides. I'm just gonna stop the IPR and return that back to default. There is also this resolution override up here that um, you may be familiar with from the from working with Redshift and other apps where you can adjust the scaling. Um, you can set the fixed scaling and whatnot. Um, I like to use fixed scaling mode where I can actually choose how much I'm zoomed into my renders and whatnot. Um, so that is also there, but that will not affect the final image that you render to disk like it would if you were adjusting the resolution over here.